Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to our first edition of Indie Game Interviews. I'm Abel Alegria, AJ, or Sinister, whichever name you know me by. We are joined today by a very special guest, Mr. Stephen Alexander, founder, no, founder of Infamous Quest, writer, director, co-producer of Quest for Infamy. Steve, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing, AJ? Pretty good, pretty good. Can't complain. I'm happy that I finally got you to sit down and uh, talk. Um, I'm not really going to be beat around the bush too much because um, I've known Steve for many years. Yes, yes, And, yes. Um, you know, we go way back. So uh, I, I just want to go ahead and uh, get into the nitty gritty. Uh, first of all, Steve, tell us, tell us the full story. Um, when, how did you get into making indie games? When did it first start? Wow, that's actually a loaded question. The first time I attempted to make games was way back in that mythical era known as the 80s. I was listening to the latest Michael Bolton album in about 1989, and I thought to myself, God, this is awful. So I turned it off, and I turned on my computer, and um, I decided... <laughs> I decided to mess around with BASIC, the programming language. Yep, and, yep. Um, you know, I'd been playing Sierra games for a while at this point. And uh, so, of course, I tried to create my own. And uh, I did come up with a pretty funny little clone of uh, Mystery House, basically, okay. you know, with little, uh, you know, line-drawn graphics and BASIC, and you could type in commands and go places. And that was really neat. And, uh, and God, though, the... the the programming code was so awful. I wish I still had it somewhere on a disc just to see all the, you know, all the, the crazy things I did in it, you know, like uh, all the little tricks I used to make it work because, God, it was sloppy. So anyway, we're going to fast forward through all of my teen years because they were extremely awkward. And we're going to get right into the 21st century when, uh, you know, I discovered uh, Tierra you know, who, as you knew uh, at the time, had done remakes of King's Quest 1 and 2. And uh, on their forums, I met Sean Mills, who's, you know, my partner in all this. And, uh, you know, he goes uh, by the name of Clytus on the forums. And uh, we got to talking. And we were like, oh, well, we both fiddle around with AGS, which was this GUI-based programming uh, language that allowed you to make adventure games. Great free. And we just, uh, yep, it was yep. great free software, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's still free, and it's open source now. But um, uh, we decided to uh, start working on uh, a game together, and, uh, you know, we came up with the original idea for Quest for Infamy back in 2003. Uh, you know, at that point, it was going to, you know, it was like a parody almost of, uh, you know, uh, Heroes Quest or, or Quest for Glory, you know, and we, we plan to have, you know, a, a villainous character come to Spielberg instead of a hero and, you know, cause all kinds of mayhem and trouble. And it was really more just kind of a joke, you know, and, uh, you know, it wasn't too well thought out. And we worked on that for a while and uh, realized that we didn't have the, uh, the prowess to pull something like that off yet. And Sean had said, well, you know, um, I, uh, I made this uh, little uh, King's Quest 3 room. You know, and um, I said, I can't understand you, man. Your <laughs> accent's too thick. And so we decided to stop talking, you know, and uh, he typed, which was much better. You know, Australians, much better seen than her. Defin <laughs> definitely true with uh, Sean, especially. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just always picking on him. I'm sure in some interview he'll insult my Americanness. But anyway, we um we decided to start working on a remake of King's Quest Three because you know at that point, um it looked like uh you know Tierra, which now called themselves AGDI, was going to be working on Quest for Glory Two VGA, and uh, so we decided to uh, do a remake of King's Quest Three, and lo and behold, we did it. And uh, you know along the way, we picked up a lot of great people to help us with it. Broomy, being one of the ones who's been with us since the early days. You know, he was just a teenager at that point, and uh, and you came along and you helped out on King's Quest Three and Space Quest Two, and uh, you know, and became you know part of the crew. And all those and, 
and all those other mysterious projects that shall not yeah. be named. Yeah, yeah, all the all the all the half started projects we have in the vault are are, are kind of fun, but uh, so you know that's that's how we did it, and uh, you know, and it's kind of funny because during that whole time, I you know had so much free time to do all this because in 2002 on new year's eve that's when i found out that my kidneys were dead and i had to go on dialysis so i spent almost all of 2003 on dialysis with a lot of free time okay. and that's when we started working on um uh, quest for infamy and the original version and uh you know transitioned into king's quest 3 and i got my first kidney transplant during that and um and uh you know, just a couple of months after I had the first kidney transplant, I had the follow-up surgery, which botched and harmed my new transplant, and it never worked quite right, and eventually failed a few years later, and I went back on dialysis. So I was on dialysis for most of the production of King's Quest Three and uh, and Space Quest Two. So you know, that was you know, like that happened all during that time. I. Uh, I uh, met a girl, got married, so did Sean, you know, I mean, well, you know, life happened during all of this while we made these games, and it wasn't until after I got my second transplant in uh, 2011, in the summer of 2011, you know, I came back from that, and I was like, all right, we're finishing Space Quest 2, and then I knew that after we were done with that, I wanted to do, you know, our original uh game and that would be a quest for infamy with an original story original characters everything so yep and i always i always remember um because of course all of us were, were aware of, of of your situation uh and 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 i think and i think everyone uh, who's on the team right now will agree it was also it was such a great inspiration to you know hear that you were you know going through all this but had so much passion to keep on going because sometimes when we when we went through the lulls you know of you know everybody slowing down and then you you know read things and be like oh my life sucks so much uh, <laughs> I stepped on dog shit that day and, and then you would come in and you'd be like oh oh that's really bad and then you tell us all, your story and then everyone was like well we're all a bunch of pussies let's get back to work. <laughs> Um, and that was that was really great. But what I do want to ask you is this, because it's it's funny. I know uh, from experience that working on these games, sometimes you know you'll doubt yourself. Sometimes you'll, yeah. you'll you'll doubt if you'll ever make anything. When do you think was the moment that you went, "Wow, making these games that's that it's working. I want to keep doing this." When did you first realize that this was actually a venue or a um, uh, a possibility that you know that you could get into. Do you remember when that was? When you had that? Yeah, you know, after we'd been doing it for a couple of years, it was um around 2005, and we were you know we were heavy into production of uh, King's Quest Three, and you know we got to a certain point, like you said, and it was almost done, but you know we were kind of in a lull, and we we're picking it back up, and um, you know uh, at that point. Uh, I had a lot of upheaval in my personal life at the time. I, you know, was, uh, you know, was, you know, didn't have much money. I was looking for a new place to live. Um, I was dating a girl at the time, and we were not getting along. And you know, it was, you know, it was awful. And um, you know, I came in, I came into the forums, and all of a sudden, like all this work had been done, uh, you know, by by you and Sean and stuff. And you guys were like, Hey, check this out. Look what we did. And it was just amazing. And I was like, Holy cow, you know, collaborating with these guys, we're, we're doing this. We're really doing this. We're going to finish this game. We're going to release it. And you know, like, wow, this is something that we can do. We all have the talent working together to do this. And I knew at that point that, you know, no matter what was going wrong in my personal life, you know, and any questions of, you know, my health and concerns i knew that you know this was important and if i never did anything else in my life that mattered at least i would be a part of something special like this and that that would transcend my own problems yeah it was it was absolutely you know um, a great experience and um there was a lot of laughing there was a lot, a lot of laughing uh, because if, if anything, it was really, really, a, a, you know, a gut busting experience. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. There was some crying um, and mostly we, we had to tell Broomy to stop. 
you know, with the crying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Poor Broomy. I feel I feel like ever since I've met him, I, I would always give him shit. But he's a great guy. We we always did. We always teased him because he was like the youngest one, you know. But like seriously, he's like he's friggin' amazing, you know. The the kid's awesome, yeah. and you know, and like. But we just we tease him mercilessly. And the, the funniest thing now is, you know, he's, he's grown up into this, you know, really responsible, you know, adult, and uh, you know, he's just a a good guy, you know, and it, yet he still takes the brunt of all the all the jokes because, man, like that's what we do. We joke and rip on each other behind the scenes. You know, we're a bunch of guys having fun. It's, he takes the brunt of it from us old men. Yeah, it's 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 he's he's really amazing. Now I do want to ask you something because you know it's part of the standard uh, questionnaire. Yeah. Um, when you made your first couple of games, what would you say was your the, the most rewarding experience? The most rewarding experience of it, jeez, oh, you know, it's kind of a tie b- between working with amazing people from all over the world, you know, from all walks of life, you know, like. You know, I mean, I, I live in upstate New York, you know, in a pretty sm- in a pretty small city, and you know, it's you know it's kind of isolated up here, you know. And before the internet, you know, I mean, like anything like this would be unthinkable. But I work, you know, with people, you know, who are from all over the world, who are multilingual, you know, whereas I speak a little snippet languages, but like you know, nothing like. You know, all our compatriots there, like you, for instance, you can speak several languages, you polyglot. Yep. yep. And, uh, you know what I mean? And, you know, you've you've lived in all different kinds of places that I could never dream of. And yet we all work together. And, you know, we, we came from different backgrounds and cultures, but we found this common element. And I learned so much about the world and how I relate to it through that. And that was definitely one you know part that was extremely rewarding. And the other part of that is the fans that play this game that we got to interact with that are from all over the world, you know, from five continents, you know, we've gotten letters from people and people that interact with us, you know, on a daily basis that love what we're doing. And, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a dude from a small town in New York state. And that's awesome to me. Yeah, that's absolutely – it's absolutely true. Uh, just talking with people from all over the world that you would never imagine you, you would ever contact in your life. And, and, you're, yeah. and you were doing it through something that you loved, which was you know making games. Yeah. Um, on the flip side though, and, and, and I do want to ask you this because – and I'll share my experiences. Um, but what was the most hurtful experience you know, while making these games? Oh, you know – you know, when you when you disappoint people, you know, when I would, you know, disappoint other people on the team, you know, if I'd done something wrong or bad or, you know, if you disappoint, you know, uh, the fans, you know, and they don't like what you did. And, you know, then they start to they start to, you know, like cast aspersions on your character like you like you did something intentionally to harm them, you know, which is like so far from the truth, you know, and like. Man, you know, like, I don't know. You, know, I've gotten some great letters about our games that we've made, but then I've gotten some other ones that just, like, like you know, outright, like, you know, like, like you know, called me insults for things that we did, and they're like, you ruined this and that. And I was like, geez, I'm sorry. You know, that wasn't my intent, you know. And, uh, you know, and, you know, then, uh, you know, uh, losing people along the way. We, we've had people that have – helped on these games and then just sort of disappeared into the ether and, you know, and, and, uh, and I miss them and I wonder about them, you know, and, uh, and that, uh, that always hurts. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely true, but I, um, my, probably my, my worst experience. And I know, cause I've talked to, uh, Sean and, uh, he told me it's, it's roughly around the same time when we first released, um, you know, our first game, it it had been just the second day maybe that it was out and uh, I remember we were all working I I was uh, working with Sean and we were chatting straight through the night mm-hmm. and you know we had barely gotten any sleep because we really wanted to get this game out and so uh, first we got all those you know incredible you know letters oh my god this game and our first yeah. game and and I'm not sort of ashamed to say it our first game had a couple of issues with bugs and 
And oh, not, yeah, absolutely. We were amateurs not getting paid a dime for it. Yeah, and then, but then we had that, I remember that one post where it's like, this is a god-awful oh. game. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourselves. And then we kept on getting all these other crazy emails. And like, even one post of a guy who's like, I'm going to kill myself because you ruined the, the, the yeah. classical game for me. Yeah. And and it's funny because uh, I, I remember you, you get all these great – uh, all these great responses and, 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 and you feel very proud and you feel very happy and you feel that it was worth it. And then you would just get this one tiny, crazy, obviously crazy comment and it would just zap all the energy you had and, and, and it would take a while. And, and, and that was sort of our, our noob uh, experience because we had never, uh, yeah. we had never had that experience before, you know? Yeah, no, I remember. I remember that was kind of crushing because, like, you know, you could a handle a, um, a a comment. You know, like, like sometimes you would get some something like there was two lines long that was like, you know, you the letter U suck S U K. You know, and you're like, screw that guy. But then you would have like these like, you know, page long tirades, and they were well written, and they were obviously written with passion, and you know, somebody took time and thought. You know, to uh, to craft their response, demonizing us, and like that would just like crush you. You know, you'd be, you'd just be like, oh, oh I'm so, uh, why are we doing this? You know? Yeah, it's it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. But you you know, I think we developed a thicker skin the, the longer we went on. No, it's 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 true. It's part of the experience. It's part of understanding how people will react to your work. Uh, you know, very much as, you know, any artist or whatever, you know, I know that uh, we'll all shun away from the word artist, but uh, it takes <laughs> some it takes some great deal of, of art and effort um, uh, to to do these things, you know, the, the games. Um, so, yeah, so that it's very understandable that that would have been our reaction at the time. 